uh, with this Terraform framework uh, that we are really using for one of our customer on our project. And uh, I hope that uh, it will be interesting because uh, this is a technology that is quite uh, new. And uh, I think that we, um, especially for our customer, we started it using uh, probably, let's say, not more than uh, five or six months and uh, had a lot of uh, uh, had a lot of investigation research how to apply it to customer and how to use it some in some environment like close to production in some enterprise uh, so uh, let me say first of all a few words about uh, about like background yeah, of uh, <clears throat> of our situation why we did why we decided to use it uh, so uh, we are planning uh, migration of uh, like uh, IT landscape of infrastructure landscape from the on-prem uh, to the cloud for a big enterprise company who has like thousands of employees and also a lot of customers so uh, so they uh, was uh, they, they were looking for some technology or some framework, how to migrate it, how to organize uh, their landscape in Azure, and uh, finally decided to go with this uh, uh, Terraform framework for cloud adoption framework. But uh, let's go step by step, and uh, I will explain uh, more about it. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, what is uh, CAF, yeah, or uh, Cloud Adoption Framework for Microsoft? This basically that's a framework that Microsoft uh, gives to uh, to their customers, at, and it helps uh, customer to um, define uh, define their strategy how to use uh, to use cloud plan it, uh, uh, prepare, adopt, and uh, continuously uh, implement and to use services in cloud. It covers a lot of area, like uh, really uh, where, uh, when we are in the start, so it's like how to migrate, uh, what to migrate, uh, and uh, then adopt their replications and adopt their services to move into the cloud and how to manage it because it's governance and, manage and management that's a very important part for uh, enterprise when you have uh, like hundreds and thousands of services and uh, different infrastructure components. Uh, this is framework from Microsoft. You could uh, <clears throat> learn more about it from uh, Azure documentation. But uh, if talk about uh, some components of this framework, if you're talking about uh, real uh, like uh, um, real entities inside our Azure, so uh, what we have there, like the main one, it is landing zone. So what is a landing zone? Uh, that's um, like an output of some kind of uh, multi-subscription Azure environment. Uh, and this, uh, this environment, it is designed uh, uh, to be scaled, to be secure, uh, to have like a right connectivity between this, uh, between different part of application, between different landscapes, even between cloud and on-prem. So uh, landing zones, it's like, let's say a building block of entire landscape. And uh, on this picture, you can see that uh, this landing zone, it is just a single subscription uh, that contains uh, a lot of different pieces inside it, like uh, security, some governance policies, management and monitoring, uh, some application services or real services that we have in this subscription. It also has cost management, uh, monitor, um, integration with some uh, shared services like Active Directory and networking. That's the components of landing zone. Uh, if we go through the Microsoft documentations, and in this case, uh, we uh, will see different ways how we could uh, adopt cloud and how we can move into cloud for a, a different size of your customer, yeah? Because this ways uh, they would be different if you have a small organization that use just a, a single subscription in Azure and uh, it would be 
um, really different way if you a big enterprise with uh, um, hundreds hundreds of services hundreds of subscriptions and so on so uh, as far as our customers and enterprise uh, then we are using like uh, enterprise care uh, Linux and architecture. Uh, this is also a picture from uh, official Microsoft documentation. And see, uh, here we could see that uh, in Azure, uh, it could be our landscape, our infrastructure landscape uh, could be, and uh, I think should be uh, separated into different levels, into different subscriptions uh, to organize services that are Mm, responsible and use it for, mm, let's say, uh, some management, some governance, security, and uh, from services or from the real applications. Yeah. What does it mean? That uh, first of all, we mm, are uh, we are starting from organization of our landscape. So uh, we are creating some management group, some subscription organization uh, inside of our, inside our tenant. Yeah, so we could use management groups uh, to organize uh, our subscriptions inside it. For different management groups, we could use uh, different governance and security uh, approaches uh, because uh, let's say, uh, development subscriptions uh, they, um, or subscriptions under the, some development management group or some uh, staging testing they uh, should be um, should have less uh, or could have less strict uh, security um, security rules at something in production yeah, for instance identity subscriptions it's also part of uh, our uh, Landing zone architecture, so that is a special subscriptions uh, subscription that uh, contains services responsible for identity. It could be some domain controllers uh, deployed, uh, let's say, in Azure virtual in uh, on Azure virtual machines, or it could be uh, some integration or some even third party products for uh, for identities, um, and so on. Uh, management subscription or some, let's say, centralized subscription for uh, gathering uh, logging, logs from our infrastructure, gathering diagnostic settings, uh, some automations that is responsible for, uh, let's say, uh, for, for updating and patching or uh, backups, it could be in management subscription. Mm, connectivity subscription, it's easy to understand that uh, like Microsoft uh, <clears throat> gives us uh, two options like uh, uh, hub and spoke or some uh, one, uh, one connectivity option. So if we are using hub and spoke that, uh, we, that we probably will have uh, some hub vnet uh, that is period to uh, vnet in other like landing zone or application subscriptions, uh, we um, very often have in such landscape some express route configured for connectivity with uh, uh, on-prem data center. We have Azure Firewall, we have some centralized DNS uh, and so on and so far. So uh, these services mostly will be placed in a, uh, in a connectivity subscription. So landing zone subscriptions, it's a subscription more for like application or for some services uh, used by our customer or our internal teams. So here we have uh, a lot of services from Azure. There could be any service that we have in uh, Azure Cloud deployed here in connectivity subscriptions. Uh, so, and uh, for all of these, for all of these subscriptions, we also could have uh, some let's say government governance or security enabled like policy assigned to uh, to exactly to subscription or to management group and inherited by subscription. We could have a security center that is continuously monitoring this subscription and uh, creating for us uh, some security score and also some alerts and, and automation and so on. So uh, all these parts are like a part of entire uh, organization uh, infrastructure landscape and uh, that's uh, landing zone we are talking about. Um, 
Okay. If talking about uh, uh, Terraform, uh, Terraform framework for this cloud adoption framework, uh, what is it? So uh, this is an open, so open source product that uh, developed by Microsoft engineers, architects and engineers, and it is simplifies uh, deployment and creating this kind of uh, landscape, uh, landing zones uh, in Azure cloud. Uh, it contains from um, like uh, some some components. We will discuss it later, but let me say that it is a uh, Docker container with a deploy with a rover tool. It is a Kafka form provider by itself. Uh, it's, it's it's a set of Terraform models, and uh, it's a set of Terraform landing zones uh, or set of uh, let's say examples or demo environments that could be used for uh, onboarding this framework. <clears throat> this framework help us uh, like to standardize deployments uh, and uh, it's also um, like enables community to contribute uh, to contribute into this uh, templates or uh, blueprints for different uh, for different uh, landing zones. Uh, after form DevOps tool set, it contains from uh, four main components. This is Rover, this is um, Terraform models, uh, and landing zone and launch pad. So let's start from Rover because it's, this is like a fundamental part into this tool set. Uh, what is Rover? This is a Docker container with, uh, that includes all the tools that we need to, uh, to deploy uh, infrastructure. First of all, this is a Terraform. This is uh, also a set of um, scripts uh, scripts that uh, enables us uh, to not to run just regular Terraform commands like Terraform init, Terraform plan, apply, and so on. Uh, so benefits of using Grover, uh, it is like, uh, it facilitates transaction to CI CD. What does it mean? That we could use it, uh, this rover, uh, rover container in every CI CD tool that we want to use. It could be Azure DevOps, GitHub, uh, Git, GitLab CI, and so on. Uh, it also mm, cross platform so we could use it in a, uh, on any uh, any platform like Linux, Mac, uh, Windows, and so on. Uh, the great benefit of Rover is that it is um, it is versioned, and uh, we are solving with Rover an issue, and uh, in a big team. Uh, we have a different Terraform installed uh, on every team member PC. And yeah, so uh, I think uh, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, you could see this issue when someone updates a version of Terraform and it's uh, apply some changes, update state file, and then uh, other, uh, other teammates has, uh, they have issue with uh, working with the previous version. So uh, if you are using Rover, if you're using specific, a specific version of Rover, then uh, we are solving this, this issue as well. <clears throat> uh, models. So, uh, this is models for cloud adoption frameworks that are like uh, hosted uh, in uh, Terraform, uh, in GitHub Terraform repo. And uh, that's basically models for um, most of all the most of all resources that uh, we could uh, deploy in Azure. I will not say that it is uh, that it is that they cover all the resources that we have in Azure because it's not true, but they are covering a lot of resources uh, with these models. Uh, so models, they have strong versioning, they are um, uh, also hosted inside uh, Terraform repo, uh, in Terraform registry, I mean, and uh, uh, we are using these models to uh, deploy um, specific resources with Azure Kafka, uh, with Kafka Terraform, sorry. So this is like just a picture from uh, 
therefore major calf repo according to models. So we have a lot of them. They're um, supported and updated by uh, calf community. So uh, this, this is just a uh, root folder, but if we go inside compute, for instance, we have there a lot of resources like virtual machines, app services, Kubernetes, and so on and so far. Uh, we will uh, take a look uh, into this further if we have time. <clears throat> uh, so landing zone, yeah, so landing zone uh, in, in a context of uh, Kafka reform, this is a composition of multiple resources, let's say um, modulus services or blueprints and landing zone can contain uh, some subparts, they call it services or blueprints. That means that if we are designing, uh, if we are designing landing zone, uh, we could and we actually should split it into some kind of services and, uh, uh, and levels. So um, as for, for an example, um, what could be an example uh, that we could uh, define in a, uh, our, uh, in some in some landing zone, we could uh, uh, we could define uh, several services like uh, some egress uh, DMZ or solution or like uh, some uh, network virtual appliance. They could be separated into different services, but they could be they they will be a part of the same uh, same landing zone. Mm, so uh, landing zone, the base, it's basically uh, describing some complex environments. It's, it's not just some specific subscription or some simple service. So we are mm, using landing zone as a uh, complex landscape. They compose it into services uh, or blueprints and uh, uh, then using across uh, across our organization. Uh, as a, um, as a landing zone, so as an output of landing zone, we have a some Terraform state file that could be uh, used uh, and it could be consumed. Uh, usually this is just a read operation for from other Terraform, uh, Terraform configurations or from other Terraform, uh, Terraform landing zones. Yeah. So if you are deploying some region, uh, we have a state file for it. And uh, then we could use another Terraform deployment to read outputs from this Terraform state file and uh, also uh, use this in another deployment. <clears throat> Uh, and the launch pad. So what is launch pad? So launch pad, this is uh, um, set of, also set of scripts and set of Terraform configurations. It is uh, the level zero or the base for deploying all other levels into uh, Kafka Terraform. Launch pad uh, creates uh, for us service uh, storage accounts and key vaults and also sets some permissions uh, for storing Terraform state files for higher levels. Yeah. Uh, when we are deploying LaunchPod, this is an initial point of our um, uh, starting point of our uh, Kafka Terraform framework. So let's look into the picture how uh, how it works. It's um, very similar to base uh, to how Terraform works. So we have some launchpad configuration file. We are running a command or running a pipeline. Uh, it performs Terraform in it. Uh, it performs plan and deploy, creates uh, our uh, storage accounts and uh, all the files we need. Or all the resources we need, and after this, it uh, applies. Uh, it's automatically uploads TF state file to the storage account, modifying our backend, and uh, uh, configure uh, our launch part also for a uh, remote sta uh, remote state. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, the most, uh, let's say, important uh, thing inside uh, Kafka Terraform framework that uh, they are using and they are motivate us as well to use uh, level it approach uh, or layer it approach. How to uh, how to set up our infrastructure. Uh, so in the Kafka Terraform, all, uh, all the landscape, it is uh, split into several levels, like four levels, uh, five levels, okay, with uh, level zero. And uh, we are using these levels to organize and manage uh, our infrastructure. So uh, the, base, uh, the base one level, this is level zero, uh, this is launchpad that creates uh, creates our infrastructure for having for storing uh, state files. It also uh, like give us like, and move from uh, from manual to automation. We also could implement subscription creations here into launchpad. So if we are using uh, Terraform uh, Kafka Terraform for creating subscription major subscription also could be created there or should be created there. And uh, all the um, permissions into subscriptions, they uh, also have to be created on level zero. Uh, on top of level uh, level zero, we have level one. Uh, this is more about security and compliance. And in this level, we are describing uh, um, some policies, uh, security policies, monitoring. Uh, we are we are uh, also describing access control to our subscriptions or services. Could uh, add some permission or remove some permissions, uh, and so on. Level two. Uh, level two. It is. Uh, more about connectivity and uh, it is uh, it responsible for uh, network part and shared services. So that's two, two areas of responsibility for level two. Uh, so it could be applied to a connectivity subscription and to management subscription. Mm. Uh, so, uh, if you are talking about level two and talking about uh, blueprint for network part, then uh, in network part we are creating uh, hub uh, hub network. We are creating uh, DNS. Uh, we are creating firewall and configure it. And uh, for shared services, this this is uh, backup, disaster recovery, monitor. This is uh, log analytics and app application inside and so on. Uh, after we are good with level two, we could uh, we could move to level three that is uh, about applications. Uh, so levels uh, levels below two, below three, uh, this is more like uh, levels for um, Azure, let's say, the Azure operation team, Azure security team. So uh, regulars, these levels are um, under zone of responsibility for a team who are uh, responsible for Azure itself. Yeah, like uh, probably uh, you have in, a, in or customers in it, in their organization has uh, some team uh, who is caring about Azure, yeah? like uh, um, about entire entire tenant uh, and so on. Uh, level three and up, it is more about application. So it could be used also by application teams if uh, organization structure uh, of company, it is uh, it allows to have, well, let's say DevOps guys or infrastructure engineers uh, inside application team and they have a subscriptions and they could do everything they want inside subscriptions. So their responsibility starts from level three. They could um, create uh, infrastructure uh, or they could create application landing zones like uh, it could be um, kubernetes cluster it could be just uh, regular virtual machines uh, it could be uh, data databases uh, application uh, web, web app services and so on so this is infrastructure for uh, hosting and applications and level four this is uh, about 
application deployment. Yeah, so it could be integrated with Azure DevOps, it could be integration, integrated with Ansible or any kind of uh, tool set. So uh, this is something something like this. If talk, uh, if talk about uh, uh, how levels are communicating between each other, so uh, CAF proposes us next way. So every uh, every level, this is more right now about like DevOps part. So every level it has own pipeline and own agent. It could be more than one pipeline and more than one agent because uh, our teams uh, and our infrastructure is uh, quite big for having just a single one. But uh, the main approach is that Level zero is the base one uh, and uh, it has own agent hosted on VM or let's say in containers, it uh, doesn't matter. It has a pipeline for deployment. Um, and uh, level zero um, could be called every time when we have to create any kind of um, new subscription. Yeah, so if we go back, so we, we see that uh, this level is responsible for transition from manual to automation. Uh, and uh, we are setting up with this level uh, base for our um, further levels, like, and level one as well. So uh, security, uh, security and compliance. So if we uh, have to create Create new subscriptions. We we definitely need to put this code somewhere inside, or put this configuration somewhere inside uh, level zero. Uh, run the pipeline. It will do the work. Uh, like save all the data as far as it's Terraform. It saves all the data inside the TF state file. And uh, for instance, we we have a subscription as an output of uh, level level zero. After this, uh, we could run level one. This is uh, that is more uh, this that is responsible for security and compliance. For instance, we want to apply some, uh, let's say, security policies or some role-based access control to the new subscription created. Yeah, in this case, uh, level uh, level one, uh, it is running an own agent and own VM with a um, own account. And this account has only read permission uh, to the level zero. What does it mean that uh, in this case, uh, the person, for instance, who is responsible for security and uh, compliance inside organization, it could have access only to the pipeline uh, for level one and only to the configuration files and Terraform files of level one. And uh, like uh, access of this person and responsibility of this person limited only to the security and compliance part. Uh, so it, uh, this person could consume and this pipeline could compute consume output from the level zero. So it could read, let's say, uh, Mm, list of subscriptions created and or list of other resources created on level zero, but it could not modify it, mm, could not modify this uh, TF states and could not uh, read uh, write to this TF states. <clears throat> Uh, so let's say we created uh, we created subscription. We assigned some policies here, and uh, level two. Uh, what is level two? This this is our hub and spoke and shared services. Uh, we want to create, uh, for instance, a new regional hub in Azure. So our organization is working in a uh, different regions. We have. Uh, let's say United States and we have Europe. So we are uh, setting up a regional hub uh, for the United States and we are going to um, grow our um, Asia data center here. So uh, then we are, um, we are creating a hub network on level two. We are creating shared services like uh, monitoring, uh, monitoring, alerting. Yeah. <clears throat> this is done on level two. Uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, this level two, it would also just read uh, levels that below it, level one and level zero. So it will be able to read a list of subscriptions and list of resources created there. It could also reference into these resources, but uh, zone of responsibility uh, for this level, it would be just a network and shared services. And we are regulating it uh, uh, with the permissions of identity for a pipeline for an agent. And uh, also, let's say, uh, in a big organization, we have uh, some team responsible for a network part. What we are doing in this case, so we have someone responsible for subscriptions uh, and security. Let's say it would be one team. Then we are going to uh, give permission to other team uh, Create, manage network part, manage uh, networks, firewalls, connectivity between on-prem and Azure data center, connectivity with, uh, let's say, cert, um, cert organizations, so connectivity uh, within the VPN, VPN, for instance, into Azure cloud or into some specific networks. So this would be a zone of responsibility of a network team, and they could uh, definitely work on level two with, uh, with their configurations, with their permission. After everything is uh, done from the infrastructure part, we could uh, go to the level three. Uh, this is a level that will be triggered when we deploy a new service, uh, new service into our landing zone or into our application, uh, let's say, we want to create uh, some new virtual machine for specific applications. So we are just uh, modifying some configuration inside uh, Terraform Kafka and uh, trigger this pipeline. So this looks like uh, more uh, similar to regular work with the Terraform. And uh, level four, uh, we also already discussed it a little bit. Uh, it has access to uh, to application infrastructure, but it is responsible about deployment and configuration. So it could be uh, initiated so many times uh, as we need to deploy some changes into our application. That's a layered approach of uh, Kafka Terraform. <clears throat> uh, like if talk about service composition or how to uh, how to deliver complete environment here, then how it is worked. So we have landing zone one uh, or like some level blueprint uh, models. We have input variables for it, and it produces some output variables and save it into TF state file. Yeah. Uh, Another landing zone or another level, uh, it, it could access uh, all the output variables that we have in uh, landing zone one, read it. It could use inside it is logic and uh, compose it with uh, input variables, produce own output variables and also uh, save it into TF state file. So it is a uh, layered, layered approach that is uh, created by Kafka Terraform. Uh, what is, uh, um, let's say, organiz the organization between uh, different repositories or inside uh, inside teams. How uh, how all this work in the real world? So, and first of all, we have a let's say inner loop. This is just a VS code with a uh, with a rover container. We could work with it locally if we have enough permission to deploy into some uh, subscription on Azure. Uh, so we are working locally. We are uh writing some terraform code we are comp composing some and using some modules from uh from the uh, terraform path and uh we are writing so let's say we are a developer developer or devops uh, who are creating uh who are creating levels or creating landing zones so uh our work will be create landing zone logic so in the Kafka form, um, 
uh, code split it into two different parts, like the logic and configuration. Like in regular Terraform, we have uh, files with a uh, with logic. We have TF uh, TF files, and we have a configuration stored in TF vars into variable, and we usually split them into different environments uh, and so on. Uh, the same is here. So we have uh, we have a landing zone logic. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, then we uh, have landing zones configuration. Landing zone logic, it's, it's a, a Terraform configuration that have a set of uh, modulus, a set of locals, data sources here. Uh, I will show some examples later. And we have a configuration that could be uh, used uh, by, different, uh, by different teams uh, inside organization. We have a pipeline that uh, use as well as this rover uh, for deploy uh, configuration and logic to some specific resources, uh, to some specific subscriptions or environments. So, uh, if talk about uh, if talk about organizational structure, so uh, what approach we are using? That, uh, for instance, um, we have uh, let's say experienced experienced Azure team inside organizations, uh, and this team responsible for. Uh, for working with Azure, with Azure, for managing it, all the maintenance and so on. This team uh, could be responsible for creating landing zone logic. Yeah, so this team is uh, developing its internal organization standards, what have to be included inside, uh, inside uh, some subscriptions or landing zones and so on. Uh, for instance, what, uh, what are the security, um, security standards or what are naming conventions and so on. So this team is writing logic Logic, uh, logic of Terraform, logic of uh, Kafka Terraform, and it also uh, creates an examples for configuration files. So these configuration files, they could be uh, offboarded to the developer teams, like uh, to the application teams. Let's say uh, we have an infrastructure for uh, our applications, this infrastructure should deploy um, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it should uh, also deploy some, uh, some, some application containers inside this Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and uh, for Kubernetes cluster, um, according to our internal organization standards, we have to uh, enable, uh, so this Kubernetes cluster have to be private. It had to be integrated into uh, Azure VNet using CNI plugins. It has, this version has to be not less than, um, uh, let's say uh, one twenty, uh, so and so on, and some some of rules. So we could uh, we could dis uh, we could uh, implement these rules inside this logic repo, and uh, of board part of configuration uh, uh, into. Uh, to, to the application team. Let's say they want to create new Kubernetes cluster. They, uh, they are not going to the uh, some operation team and ask for creating a new cluster for them. No, they could just, uh, they could just uh, use a pipeline. They could just create a specific configuration. Let's say, okay, we want to Kubernetes clusters uh, that have to be set in this region, in this re in this resource group. This cluster have to be like uh, of um, have to contain from uh, five nodes. This um, SKU for the nodes, it's uh, a standard B1, let's say, and so on and so far. So they could uh, just configure it according to, uh, to the uh, configurations they could manage. <clears throat> so, and uh, what also you have to know about this, like uh, Kafter forms, this is what we, uh, understand during working with this framework. So, uh, first of all, for us, it was a surprise that Robert, uh, Robert is not able to work with managed identities, or we uh, 
uh, we're not able to set up it with managed identities. So on the service principle, as, and uh, in this case, we have some additional level of complexity because we uh, need to manage uh, service principle in addition to containers uh, service principles. <laughs> Uh, in addition to containers and managed identities. Uh, Terraform models that are, yeah, that are not ideal, they have some bugs, uh, we are fixing them, we are contributing uh, into GitHub repo, so uh, we, in our team, team members are creating uh, pull requests to the GitHub repo, but uh, we could also like clone this repo and work in, uh, work in, our, in our fork if we need to fix something uh, very fast but and don't wait uh, while uh, our merge, pull, pull request will be merged into official repo. Uh, also documentation, documentation is uh, Documentation is fine. There is a lot of examples uh, uh, how to use uh, how to use this uh, product. Uh, there is also um, number of uh, um, there, there are also uh, it's it's open source so you could go and read through the Terraform uh, Terraform code for models understand how it is working and uh, it gives a lot of information but documentation is separated across a uh, number of repos and a lot of components and uh, it is uh, difficult sometimes to understand uh, how it works so yeah this complexity um, to start working with it, it takes some time to understand this framework. Uh, yeah, it has like a little bit higher complexities than regular Terraform uh, because, uh, because of uh, principles they are using. So they have a lot, they're using a lot of abstractions inside code. Uh, you could not just uh, copy paste uh, some uh, piece of code from Terraform uh, documentation and uh, it will be working. Now you have to understand how to integrate it inside the models and so on. Uh, from the other hand, uh, it really has uh, models for almost all Azure resources. So you don't uh, have to write uh, your own Terraform code. You could just uh, uh, start using it. So it's, uh, creating configuration. Uh, so that's, mm, some, that's, that's very faster than creating, uh, than creating code in Terraform. And uh, for instance, uh, Recently, I had a task to create uh, some infrastructure for a Kubernetes cluster, and we were not we were not uh, confident if we on this in this moment uh, if we go further with a Kafka form. So, uh, and trying to make uh, this uh, Terraform for Kubernetes cluster um, like not very um, how to say. Uh, um, like trying to make it more dynamic, there more flexible for different configuration. I really re reused a lot of code from uh, from the SCAF models, so that's that's true. And uh, uh, this framework uh, helps to uni uh, helps to unificate and uh, infrastructure inside the organization using models. You will understand. You will have uh, the same naming conventions. You have. You will have. Uh, what you 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 will have uh, resources designed and set like with the same principle across all your uh, all all your framework yeah all your landscape <clears throat> so that is that is what what we have so it has like a, like all the solutions it's not ideal it has its own pros and cons but uh, it is uh, worth to look into it. Okay, mm, so uh, any questions right now before I before I go to some um, some demo and uh, show you how it's working? We have some time, so no questions. Okay. So just give me a second to switch between uh, between windows. Mm -hmm. 
Let me know, please, if you can see my screen. Yes. Cool. Oh, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, have a quick look into Kafka Terraform Linux on Repo. Uh, so, um, there's a number of repositories. There's a number of, of repositories. Uh, so, uh, the, the first one, this is Kafka Terraform Linux on. This is a starter, uh, starter repo that's uh, describing how uh, how Kafka framework is working, what is the goals of it, and so on. It also describes uh, some uh, sample landing zones and uh, has reference links to the um, other repositories. Yeah. So uh, if look into um, if look into this uh, this repo, we could just uh, clone to to start working with a uh, with Kafka form. Uh, just uh, just clone this repo. Just to, to have it into your own machine, and uh, uh, then you could start working with it. <clears throat> if we want deeper understanding, uh, what Kaf, uh, what Kaf, Kaf Terraform itself? So uh, we should go to the Terraform Azure RAM Kaf, and uh, here we have like a, um, the. the Entry point for all other models. So, uh, some time ago, so uh, some time ago, they had uh, different models, like every for for each resources in Azure. But then they uh, created, uh, let's say, the main model for Terraform Azure RAM Kaif, and this model has uh, um, has references to all the other stuff inside to all the other models. So, if we go here. We can see number of models that are responsible for uh, provisioning some some set of resources in Azure. So let's go to compute you know, virtual machine, for instance, and we could see a model for a VM. <clears throat> but uh, let's go one by one. Uh, there's also a set of uh, examples that we could use if we want to create compute uh, or VM with a uh, with a Kafka Terraform, we could go here and find virtual machine, let's say uh, single Linux VM. And what we have here, so if configuration, so the most, the most, uh, the most important uh, part of Kaf, it's a super separation of logic and configuration. Yeah? So our logic is less, uh, mm, less changeable. We are not changing it so much time because it is, uh, it is, uh, it is already created. We have it is, uh, we have it is done. We have models. We have. Uh, probably some addition to addition for models, and uh, so we are just working with a uh, with a configuration with TFRs file. So and this is TFR file for uh, deploying virtual machine. So uh, this is a map variable in a Terraform or list of maps, and we are just uh, setting that uh, we want to create some virtual machine. It key will be example VM one. We have resource group reference. We have all the configuration here and so on and so far. So then if we want to create uh, one more virtual machine, we just you know, like copying this configuration, uh, place it below and uh, our uh, GAF framework will create it for us. But uh, let's go a little bit to the <clears throat> practice, practice part. So I just uh, I just cloned uh, cloned repo uh, Terraform Kafka Terraform starter Kafka uh, Terraform starter. This is from Kafka Terraform starter. It's not here. Starter kit. Yeah. So I just clone it, uh, clone it starter key to wrap on. Mm, it has some uh, some starter configurations, some um, uh, let's say uh, configuration to uh, start working with this car. Um, so 
when we just start working with uh, with this terraform so uh, we have to uh, work with a uh, with a rover uh, on our machine uh, for this rover we have a dev container uh, configuration inside repo so if you go here we see that uh, uh, here docker compose file we uh, see dev container JSON. This is uh, if we have VS code and uh, we have uh, remote container extension. So we could use this dev container and work directly inside it. So let's go and do this. Uh, I am reopening this uh, configuration inside container. So I will um, I will go into rover container. Okay, it is starting. It takes some time to start, it is fine. So uh, while it is starting, so uh, let me ex explain what are we doing right now. So uh, we are starting rover container with all the tool sets, like uh, with a rover, with a Terraform, with all the requir required tools inside container. So uh, in repository that we cloned, uh, there are all the tools we need to start working with the Kafka framework, okay? So um, what next? Uh, under this, uh, we, have, we have some configurations. Yeah? So we have some configurations. They're also, also uh, separated by levels like we, uh, like we discussed. They, we, we have few levels like level zero, this is launch pad, this is level two, uh, networking, shared services, level three, that's an application part. Level four, uh, we don't have anything for level four here, but level four is about more about application deployment and configuration. So, um, and this is configuration part. So if we uh, drill, drill down here, so what we have here, we have just a Terraform configuration TFRs file. So we don't have any kind of logic here any TF files, any uh, init uh, of Terraform, yeah? Uh, we have just uh, ju just these TFRs. <clears throat> uh, and these TFRs, they're describing uh, in level level zero, it is describing down our launch path. So where is, uh, where is our Terraform logic? Our Terraform logic is stored uh, in another in another folder, it is even stored. It is cloned for from another repo. So this is this is from another repo, but uh, uh, it is designed to work together. This configuration and this uh, logic. If we go to Launchpad, what we have here, we have in Launchpad we have a regular Terraform uh, with a main TF file. Uh, where is uh, where all providers are described it, uh, where, where is some logic described it, and so on. It also <clears throat> has a output file because output file will be used uh, from a higher level, uh, like level zero, uh, like level one and uh, level two and other. Uh, the main, uh, also like main file, which initiates uh, Terraform and models, this is landing zone TF. Landing zone TF, it references to the uh, AZTF mod CAF Azure RAM. What is it? This is our uh, CAF repo. Yeah. So, and this is a link to GitHub. So let's go. Let's see what is here. So this is our Terraform Azure RAM CAF. And uh, when, we, so, uh, when we start deploying something with CAF Terraform, this is our main entry point uh, into, into framework. So we have 
um, we have model, model launchpad, it reference to uh, capture form uh, RM. And we just need to pass uh, like the right configuration into this. So the, the main idea, separate uh, by levels and separate by, uh, let's say, a logic from configuration and zone of, zones of responsibility. Okay, something is uh, not so good with my container. I modified it yesterday. Let me let me restart it. Okay, yeah, now it's fine. So uh, I open a rover container. So I'm inside the, um, <clears throat> I'm inside it. And what could I do there? Uh, so first of all, it is mount, uh, it mounts uh, this this folder to, to the container. So when we are working with uh, with some files uh, in VS Code, uh, it's, they are also changed inside the container and uh, changes applying uh, <coughs> in this in the moment. So uh, then we have rover here. So calf rover, this tool set, it's. Uh, so it is starting when we call in this command, it is starting, it says that, okay, uh, there is no, it is checking some Azure session, existing Azure session, if it could use it. Uh, it is, so uh, it is trying to set some variables. So, okay, I have some, I, ha I am already, uh, I already have some connection to subscription, but if we, if, if we want to log into uh, some new, uh, some new tenant or some subscription, so we are doing just a rover login, it will open, it, it will not open, but give us some link for device login. I, uh, that's, that's an important, especially for deploying crunch pods that we have to be, uh, we have to be an owner in, on the subscription uh, where we want to deploy a launch pod. Why we want, why we need to be an owner because uh, launch pod uh, can assign um, some roles uh, and provide some permissions to other users yeah, and to, to set up, to set up. <clears throat> I will use uh, some uh, some tests uh, test tenant because my soft serve subscription is disabled. So let's let's log in. Okay, yeah. So I am logged in. Then, in order to To deploy something, let's start uh, uh, rover LZ. So we have to uh, we have to give rover the path to to launchpad. So first of all, we have to deploy launchpad. Where is our launchpad? Uh, landing zones, scuff launchpad. Launchpad, and let's. Uh, we have to use uh, parameters. This is a launchpad. Launchpad, and pass to configuration folder. And so, in Terraform, we are specifying var file. Uh, here, we could specify a var folder, and also the space tf. Thank you. 
No, we don't need landing zones. This is a pass to configuration. Configuration, D demo level zero. And action. So what we are going to do, uh, action in our case, it would be a plan. Uh, does not have any files. Any... Okay, yeah, uh, I missed. So basically uh, what it is doing right now, uh, it, the uh, rover makes some, uh, some checks, check, checking permission. It uh, also, so let's go. Mm, yeah, so it is setting some variables, make some, uh, make some checks like uh, checking permission. If I have an own, uh, owner permission here, uh, then it is initiating Terraform. Uh, and it is combining all the files inside our configuration uh, and uh, like, um, pass them to the um, Terraform like configuration, like TFRs. Yeah. So basically this is just a Terraform command, but uh, with some wrapper uh, on it, like, uh, like this, uh, this rubber. So what we could see is that uh, it is planned to create 65, uh, 65 resources. So let's try to apply this. We have to wait a couple of minutes while it is blank. It is still running, but uh, we could see that this already created number of resource groups here. Um, Launchpad level zero resource group is it has just key vault, but okay, yeah. Right now it is created also storage account here, and in our storage account after After deployment finished, uh, our TF state will be here. <clears throat> if we also go uh, look into permissions, we have to see that oh, there is nothing. 
yeah, there's nothing inside permission because we don't have uh, accounts right now. But uh, basically what it created, what Launchpad created, it created uh, four or five resource groups for different levels. It also created uh, key vaults uh, <clears throat> and storage account for it. Um, it will place a TF state file for our level zero into the storage account. And, uh, and all like uh, all like uh, other levels, they uh, would work with this slash pod to store their uh, their uh, their TFs files and their secrets here. Also, there is a number of tags you could see that uh, uh, created uh, for the uh, for the launch pod. So, what is our landing zone uh, name? What is level version of rover environment and so on and so forth. <clears throat> So, uh, if we need, like, uh, uh, if we need to deploy uh, to deploy some uh, uh, some level on top of this launch pad, uh -huh. right now it is creating assignments. Yeah, so right now it is creating assignments for different levels. If you need to create uh, to deploy uh, level one on top of the launch pad, we are going into uh, into configuration of level one, uh, adding variables for resources we want to create. For level one, we don't have anything right now, so there is no additional security. But let's go into level uh, level two, for instance, and uh, look how it is working. So. Mm, all our uh, all our resources they are specified mm, inside configuration files. So we are not touching Terraform. If you want to add something like new virtual machine or something like this, we are just modifying uh, modifying the configuration files. So we are not touching anything else. And uh, that's uh, that's basically the. Mm, what CAF gives us, like managing uh, managing with the configuration and not touching uh, Terraform uh, so much. Okay, so uh, I will not uh, I will not deploy uh, all the levels because basically the process is the same. So uh, <clears throat> the process for it is the same. So, um, Let's, uh, let me ask if you have any questions and I would like to answer them. Is there are no any question? Uh, so uh, I'd like to ask a couple, if you don't mind, of course. Sure. 